Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers from the Works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today, Food, Part 2, from Sri Aurobindo. The first thing to be attained about eating is to get rid of the greed of food, the attachment and desire, to take it only as a need of the body, to think little of it and not to allow it to occupy a big place in the life. Also to be satisfied with what you get, not to hanker. At the same time, sufficient food should be taken avoiding either deficiency or excess. An excessive coercion or nigraha in this respect, as opposed to reasonable control, often brings a reaction. One should go steadily, but not try to get too much done at once. As for sannyasis and food, sannyasis put a compulsion on their desires in this and other matters. They take ascetic food as a principle, but this does not necessarily kill the greed for food. It remains compressed, and if the compulsion or principle is removed, it can come up again stronger than before. For compression without removal often increases the force of these things instead of destroying them. Not to eat as the method of getting rid of the greed of food is the ascetic way. Ours is equanimity and non-attachment. These things, persistent desires, still rise in you because they have been for so long prominent difficulties and as far as the first is concerned, because you gave it much justification from the mind at one time. But if the inner consciousness is growing like that, they are sure to go. Only if they rise, don't give them harborage. Perhaps with regard to the greed for food, your attitude has not been quite correct. Greed for food has to be overcome, but it has not to be given too much thought. The proper attitude to food is a certain equality. Food is for the maintenance of the body, and one should take enough for that, what the body needs. If one gives less, the body feels the need and hankers. If you give more, then that is indulging the vital. As for particular foods the palate likes, the attitude of the mind and vital should be, if I get, I take. If I don't get, I shall not mind. One should not think too much of food, either to indulge or unduly to repress. That is best. One does not need to get a hatred for food in order to get rid of the greed for food. On the other hand, to develop dislike for certain things may help to reject them but that, too, is not always the cure, for they may remain in spite of the dislike. 
It is true that the greed of food, the desire of the palate, are very strong in a great many, if not most of the sadhaks. This is one of the things that they take as natural and seem not at all anxious to get it out of them. I do not think it is active in you. What you felt must have come in from the others. For very often one feels the things that are in the atmosphere and one must be careful to distinguish that from one's own feeling. Of course, the vital is insatiable. There are only two things that interfere with it. Greed for food, the limitations of the body, and the disapprobation of the mind. But the latter is not always there. There is also, of course, the possibility of the psychic interfering. But to that, the vital becomes pervious only at a certain stage. It is therefore the body that is the only check for most people. These complaints about food are of long standing with many. They come from the animal man and will go on so long as the sadaks identify themselves with the physical animal in them. The correspondent wrote that the vital being never seems to tire of the enjoyment of food, even though it results in illness, pain, and misery for the body. What is to be got rid of is vital desire and attachment, the greed of food, being overjoyed at getting the food you like, sorry and discontented when you do not have it, giving an undue importance to it, etc. If one wants to be a yogin, it will not do to be like the ordinary man, to whom food, sex and gain are nine-tenths of life, or even to keep in any of these things the reactions to which human nature is prone. Equality is here the test, as in so many other matters.